Hi, my name is Ben. A while back, my brother and I challenged ourselves to make a small monster training game in two months. From that challenge, Demon Lock was born. We successfully launched the game into a closed alpha state about 10 weeks after starting the challenge. The feedback from the closed alpha encouraged me to continue working on the project. Welcome to this Demon Lock devlog. In this devlog, I take steps to make the game look better and improve the UI. In the last devlog, I mentioned doing a game jam. Last week, I took a break from Demon Lock in order to try and make a game for the Godot Wild Jam. That didn't go well at all. I felt a little discouraged because of how the game jam went, but making a bit of progress usually helps me to get motivated again. So despite my discouragement, I jumped back onto the Trello for Demon Lock and got to work. The horrible UI of the game was the first problem that needed to be solved. I decided to start small and find a new font. To quickly compare new fonts, I used the Windows Snipping tool to place a font candidate over the game while it was running so I could easily see what the font looked like in the game without having to import it and set everything up. There are two main things you want to look out for when finding a new font. You want to make sure that the font's licensing will work for your project. And you also want to make sure the font at least has the Latin based characters so that when you move to localizing your game, you're going to have the characters you'll need to localize it into other languages. Next, I decided to add the screen wide palette swap shader that I had in the original alpha. The problem is that I couldn't use my old solution, which was hacky anyways, because the wide range of values due to anti-aliasing in 3D. To solve this problem, I followed a simple gradient shader tutorial by Johnny at GDQuest, and I'll link to that in the description. It was really helpful. After implementing the palette swap shader, it was pretty cool to switch to different palettes in real time and see how the mood of the game was affected. I was pretty happy with how all this turned out, so I decided to take a quick break. After the break, it was time to address the button list for selecting actions. I opened up my default theme and started messing around with the style box flat resources. These are pretty nice for setting up some simple style boxes without having to make your own sprites. The final result was good enough I decided to move on. The next issue to address was the ugly UI for the unit stats, with the most glaring issue being the lack of a health bar. I started solving this problem by making a health frame sprite and a health bar sprite. Next I used a texture rect node, texture progress node, and a label to compose a nice looking health bar. I based the design off the original pixel art version in the alpha because I liked how that version looked. After connecting the unit's health to the texture progress value property, the health bars were working like a charm and I was pretty happy with how they turned out. After getting the health bars working, this created a new issue, which was that now the UI for the unit stats overlap each other. I'd been considering using a static location on the screen for the unit UI, and now seemed like a good time to implement that. The first problem with using a static position for the UI is that I didn't have a lot of room above the units. To solve this issue, I moved the camera up. But that created an issue when a unit was selected. So I fixed that issue. Well, not exactly. There we go. Next, I repositioned this UI for each unit and removed the code that made it follow that unit. Easy enough, but that created a new problem. The UI was no longer a child of each unit. So I had to find a way to connect the data from the unit to the UI. I ended up using signals for this, but that didn't quite work. After a few minutes of debugging, it ended up being a signal issue. It seems if you save a branch as a new scene, it removes any signals that were connected via the editor. Just a little tip there. It only took me a few minutes to find it. After fixing that, things seemed to be working as expected. It was time to take another break. After the break, I jumped back into the UI. The last problem that I wanted to solve with the UI is that the unit stats doesn't show how much energy they have. I started making some mockups for how the energy would look. I wanted to do something different than what we had in the alpha. I didn't really like that meter. I got something that looked good enough. I might iterate on this later still, but I wanted to make progress. So I started working on getting it into the game. 
the problem that needed to be solved here is I wanted to make this energy meter dynamic. So I wanted to give it a dynamic maximum amount and a dynamic value inside of that maximum amount and then have the UI reflect that accurately. I decided to make a panel container and put two texture recs inside of it. One for the full sprite and one for the empty sprite. I set the stretch mode to tile and expand to true. I also unchecked the fill size flag on all three of the control nodes. This allowed me to alter the min size X value for the empty and full texture recs to customize their size. I hooked this up in code and it seemed to be working well. At this point, I went a bit off schedule, deviated from the calendar a little, and started adding in the chromatic aberration shader that I had in the alpha. I wanted to make some improvements to the shaders, so here they are. Clearly improved. Much better. Just kidding. That's more like it. The chromatic aberration shader still needs some tweaking, but I'll leave that for another time. Don't want to get too caught up in the details here. Continuing off schedule, I added in the blur shader as well that was in the alpha. This went more smoothly. The shader simply grabs the screen texture and blurs it using some offset from a uniform texture that I pass into it. Overall, I am happy with the improvements. I'll continue iterating on this and improving it. It's not perfect yet, but it's a step in the right direction. And I feel comfortable enough to start working on the battle systems again. Thanks for watching the devlog. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to support my channel, you can sign up for the Demon Lock mailing list or you can check out my Godot course as well. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will talk to you all later.